And that seems to be the, the, the pretty micro focus, Max, the, the, the forecast for, for transaction volume. Should the street uh, be concerned about that? No, I'm afraid I can't, uh, I can't give the street that credit whatsoever. We've had an absolute blowout quarter. Every number top to bottom increased our estimates for the going forward and uh, are showing no signs of slowing down or weakness or anything of the sort. I rarely argue with the market, but I think the team worked too hard to accomplish too much too well for them to be okay with it. We're just showing the, uh, the the highlights from the quarter gone, and you know, top line, you beat considerably, um, matching the what the street expected from a, a, a loss per share. What was the biggest factor on that top line growth uh, of all of the different products you're now offering? I think across the board, we did extremely well. Um, we posted just really strong holiday season. Um, our partners at Shopify were a large contributor to our growth, outpacing the average. The card has been scaling. We bragged about, uh, about 400,000 active card holders in our November investor event, only to show that we have 700,000 actives and growing pretty rapidly. Now, so there's, a, there's quite a lot of things that contributed to the growth, but overall, the company has just performed across the board really as well. Can I dig in a bit more on the gross merchandise volume and value? And I mean, ultimately, you call it out in your earnings and you said we've posted the fastest year over year GMV growth rate in over a year. And you're basically saying, look, we can show how we operate our business with excellence. Then give you this moment to speak to an investor and an analyst community that is saying, look, they're slightly worried about what they think is a GMV deceleration for the second half, fiscal second half of 2024. You say it's the guidance is the floor. What more can you say to an investor base that for some reason is, is determining this as a slowdown and they're worried? No, I think the best way I can speak to our investors is by posting more results. Uh, any form of, uh, trust me, I'm not a crook, uh, is always uh, met with great skepticism. So we'll just continue to post the results. The results from last quarter more than speak to themselves. The blowout growth we've shown is the exact numbers that uh, we were gunning for and we'll be gunning for better and better numbers that it is the floor and we don't want to change our guidance strategy at all if you yeah. like a bar that we're going to aim to exceed ourselves. Well, a lot of analysts can see that Truist Securities, Andrew Jeffrey, saying that we'd be surprised by the magnitude of the slowdown. Bloomberg Intelligence also saying, look, they don't see, they see momentum and they don't see this sort of slowdown. So tell us about momentum and ultimately about a U.S. consumer that feels rubbish about the economy, but the economy still continues to go incredibly well. What are you seeing from a determination to spend and to spend with you? So the share of wallets across our many, many partners is generally increasing, and we're very happy about that. Um, U.S. consumer, I think, you know, if I'm allowed to speak on behalf of the U.S. consumer, are feeling a little bit differently than they are acting, and I have no idea if it went to that, but there are folks that are having a hard time paying their bills, and you can see that in the credit card industry, building up their delinquencies and reporting increase in building up reserves. None of that is true for us. We posted another quarter of flat quarter and quarter and year on year delinquencies, 30 days higher, et cetera. Those are all measures of our excellent credit map. A firm consumer, the ones that we actually lend to, are doing fine. They're paying the bill, paying them on time without, I might add, any sort of late fees or gimmicks or tricks. The industry is starting to show signs of cracking where folks are maybe a little bit overextended. I think that's probably what's playing in the consumer's mind. That said, the holiday season was quite strong for us. Um, we saw really great engagement from you know, occasional buyers that went to uh, our online partners and bought their gifts all the way to our card holders that use the card for everything from uh, daily spend to, uh, to, to gift buying. So we feel very good about our ability to help folks that can borrow. And most important thing, I just want to always add, because we don't charge late fees, because we don't compound the interest, our incentives are profoundly aligned with those that we lend money to. They can pay us back on time, on schedule. We will make less money. Our growth is actually driven not just by the fact that there's a lot of demand for 
yes. buying for preferring the demand for a firm specific product and our ability to develop. So, so I understand that. You, you and I have talked a lot about buy now, pay later, but also the other products that you, you offer, right? This week, I think what Caroline and I heard from CEOs, markets, guests, the consumer's strong, but as you just pointed out, credit card is becoming a notable data point to track. How does that impact you? In- Obviously, we watch all the industry data like everybody else. Um, again, our borrower has done very well for us, with us, and when we lend money, we take into consideration their performance across other borrowing devices they have, such as credit cards, et cetera. So we know that the firm consumer is quite strong on their feet and they're able to pay us back, and that's shown in our numbers and in the numbers that we're reporting. You can see them more frequently than our quarterly numbers in our EBS reports, et cetera. And so we feel quite good about the segment of the economy that we serve. I think there are folks that are starting to, you know, perhaps it's uh, really the running out of the, the pandemic savings that's taking place elsewhere. We are able to right. uh, accept borrowers successfully. 